Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here, and we are going over another 2D equilibrium problem. So uh, check out the channel description below for this video, and you'll see that in the introduction to university physics video that we did, this is under topic three. Okay, so we're doing equilibrium, and as you'll see, there's a little bit of a trick in this one, okay, and that trick is that we are using a spring. Okay, so there's some, just a couple little tricks that we need to learn about springs so that we can solve the problem when it comes on the exam because this is, you know, professors love to just throw little springs and stuff in there and uh, little tricks just to try and mess you up. Okay, so let's uh, work on this for a bit and let's see what we've got. So we have a force system here, okay, we have a system of three different cables, okay, so this cable is actually a spring here, I apologize for the, uh, the artwork there, but that's a spring, okay, I've labeled it there, and we're given the K value of 800 newtons per meter. I'll explain what K is in a second. Okay, we have cable BC and CD, or BD, and they're all uh, attached to rigid supports, okay? So that's a wall, it's just something that's not moving. And remember, when we look at the problem, the first thing we want to identify is that it's an equilibrium problem, okay? So it means that the whole system is not not in motion, okay? And we're gonna need to know that in order to solve this, all right? so. We, we do need to know what Hooke's Law is, okay, and this is a formula that you should just remember because it's really easy, okay, and the restorative force, okay, for a spring system is proportionate to, we have K, which is the spring constant, so that's a constant of the this given spring, okay, that's not something that you should just know, okay, that has to be given or you have to have enough information to solve for K, okay, so that is a property of the specific spring that's in the system, okay. And that is times S, okay? So what's S? Well, S is the stretch length of the spring, okay? So the spring constant times the stretch length of the spring equals the force required to restore the spring to its original form, all right? So if we go ahead and take a look down here, okay? And a lot of the time, what's, what'll happen is this variable here, S, okay, won't be given, okay? But what you might be given is the unstretched length, okay? So if you were to just take 200 millimeters and put it in for S, you, that would be wrong, okay? Because S is the stretched length, and we need to find S here, okay? So, L naught, in this case, okay, is going to be our unstretched length, okay? So that's the length, the initial length, L naught, all right? So L naught is equal to, all right, 200 millimeters, okay? And uh, this, from A to B here, we can consider that entire thing to be the spring, and we're given the length of that. 500 millimeters, okay? So our L, okay, or we're assuming that this string is stretched current, this spring is stretched currently, okay, that L is equal to 500 millimeters. All right, so now if we have L, okay, and we subtract L naught, if we just draw this diagram, if you wanna draw this diagram and it helps you, that's great, okay? Because if we just take L and we subtract L naught, we're left with S, right? So if we take L, okay, and we subtract L naught, we will have 500 millimeters minus 200, okay? and that will give us 300 millimeters, which will be equal to S, all right? So that's kind of the theme in these questions, okay, is you're gonna need to find the force in AB using Hooke's Law. That's, that's generally how these springs will factor into these types of problems, okay? So you're gonna need to use the information given in the spring, use Hooke's Law to find the force. Once you have the force, then we're gonna write equilibrium equations, okay? So step one, okay, steps, okay, is use Hooke's Law, find the force. Okay, two, we're gonna draw our free body diagram, and then three, solve the forces. And we're gonna solve the forces using our free body diagram. Okay, so we have our S now, okay? So if we go ahead and multiply S, okay? And as we can see, all right, this is another trick, all right? And don't make a mistake here, because if we multiply 300 by 800, okay? You see we have a un uh, units of millimeters here and units of meters here, okay? And that's another trick. You need to immediately recognize and always be paying attention to the units, okay? So units of meters, units of millimeters, okay? Everything needs to cancel out. So let's go ahead and convert this 300 millimeters to meters. So we're just gonna move that decimal place over one, two, three, okay? So S is equal to 0 0.3 meters. Okay, perfect. So now we're not gonna make a mistake. So we can say that force AB here, okay? Force AB is equal to K times S. So we have 800 
times 0 0.3, okay? And that is going to be equal to 240 newtons. Perfect, okay. So, let's go ahead and begin. All right, I'm gonna draw my free body diagram. I'll just draw it down here, okay? Because this is not a very uh, difficult question from this point. Okay, so we have Y and we have X. Okay, so we have our, right, we have our F, this is point B, okay, this is C. All right, we have BD, and that's coming down this way, okay? And we have our FA, okay? We'll say FC, FD, and FA, but we have FA, all right? And that's equal to 240. Perfect, okay. So, in this question, okay, we'll see that we're given distances, okay? We're not given angles here. They'll all give you all different types of things. They'll give you a triangle, a three, four, five triangle. They'll give you the angle, okay? In this case, we're given the distances. And using those distances, okay, we can really just use trigonomet trigonometry in order to solve for these angles. Okay. So, right here, we have a 400-400 triangle, okay? And, well, what, what type of trig should we use in order to solve this question, okay? Or solve for that angle there, all right, theta. And that's pretty simple, right? We have the opposite side and we have the adjacent side, okay? So, all we need to do is, you know, use tangent. That's easy. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have 400, okay, divided by 400, which is obviously one. We take the tan inverse of that. We'll see that this is a 45 degree angle, okay? Now, let's go ahead and take a look at this one, okay? We'll call this phi, all right? So what's phi, right? We need to know what phi is in order to, you know, be able to express these forces in our equilibrium equations, okay? So, well, this time our opposite is 300 here, okay? and our adjacent is 400. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll take the tan inverse. Okay, so that means that this is going to be 36.9 degrees, okay? So our phi angle there is 36.9, our theta is 45 degrees, and we can go ahead and express this in our equilibrium equations. And I'm just gonna do that in the bottom here. Okay, we're kind of running out of room, but that's okay, we're almost done. So let's write the sum of the forces. If you don't know what I'm doing here, okay, go back a video. I explain how to do this. Okay, sum of the forces in the X. Let's start with, uh, we have our FA, which is in the negative direction. Okay, so we have negative 240. All right, we have, and I'll just draw the angles. So when we've solved this here, transfer it to your free body diagram because it's less messy and it's much easier to kind of visualize. Okay, so we have 45 degrees here. We have 36.9 degrees down here. All right, and let's go ahead and resolve these two forces in this direction. Okay, so we have our FC, all right? That is the adjacent side. Okay, so we're gonna use cosine, and they're both positive, right? So we have FC cosine 45 plus, and then we have FD, same thing, okay? Same direction, FD cosine and 36.9 and that's all equal to zero because it's an equilibrium problem. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve for the forces in the y direction now. All right, same thing, we have FC, all right, we, this FA is, doesn't exist in the, uh, in the y direction, so we can ignore that. And we want to use sine now because the opposite side of this triangle is gonna give us our y component of that force. So we have FC acting upwards, sine 45, Minus FD is now going down, right? It's in the negative Y direction, and we want to use sine again. Okay, so we have FD sine 36.9 equals zero. Okay, so um, I kind of run out of room here, so I'm not gonna solve this system of equations. You should be able to solve a system of two linear equations like this. Just substitute for one variable, plug it into the other equation, solve for the unknowns. Okay, so do that on your own, please. And I'll just give you the answers because, um, yeah, it's much quicker that way. You don't want to see me do basic math, right? Okay, so we have force C, okay? Force C is going to be equal to 145 newtons. All right, and we have FD is going to be equal to 171 newtons. Perfect. So go ahead, try and solve these questions for yourself, okay? See if you get exactly the same thing as that. If not, go back and uh, really make sure that you know how to do these two 
on the test because that's kind of where you're gonna make the mistake. Make sure you know how to do it quickly and without any errors. So, hope you enjoyed this video, kind of an introduction on Hooke's Law and Springs in equilibrium equations, okay? So, yeah, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Stay tuned for more.